Good afternoon, cats.com community. I hope you're doing well. I'm really glad to be here with you. My name is Dr. Sarah Wooten, and I'm a small animal veterinarian in the United States. Graduated from UC Davis in 2002, practiced internal medicine for 16 years. And cats.com has uh, brought me on to answer your questions at these live streams on uh, three o'clock Mountain Standard Time, which is where I am. So I am going to um, not waste any more time, but I'm going to get into this because you guys always have amazing questions and I want to ask, answer as many as possible. Before I keep, go any further, I have to do the uh, customary disclaimer. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. This is not intended Hi, everybody. This is not intended to uh, replace the advice of your local veterinarian. You use all of the things that I am saying to you uh, at your own discretion and risk. And I'm going to talk to you how I would talk to a friend. So if somebody came up to me or how I would treat my own cat. So I'm, that's what you're going to be getting from me. I am your friend. You're like, hey, I have some questions. You're not actually my veterinarian. But what, what do you think about in this scenario? And then I'll share it with you. So we have a couple up here. Let's see. Awesome. So hi, Shannon. Um, Shannon has a question about hair regrowth in cats. How to help your cat regrow fur after a surgery or a burn? Wonderful question. So that can be frustrating, especially because they do sh shave such large areas. Uh, and it's important to remember that hair growth in cats and basically all mammals, including us, comes in phases. We, they have three different phases. They have a growth phase, a just static phase where nothing's really happening. And um, they have, sorry, just looked at my phone for a second. Uh, and then they have what's called the telogen phase where it falls out. And each phase is different lengths of time depending on where, how healthy the cat is, how young the cat is. Um, younger cats have longer growth and maintenance phases where the hair just stays. Um, and older cats can have more, um, less growth, uh, longer, just stationary, um, makes sense, right? So, uh, depending on when your cat was shaved in their growth, hair growth cycle, that will affect how long it will take for the hair to grow back. If they were shaved during a maintenance phase, for example, then, um, the hair, the, all the rest of the hair still has to kind of fall out and then come back in. So it can take anywhere, I mean, hair can start regrowing within two weeks, but sometimes it can take up to a year for hair to grow back. In the meantime, what can you do? Well, you can make sure that your cat is eating a healthy diet and is in otherwise good health because the way the body, anybody thinks about hair and skin is it's the largest organ in the body and it uh, is the first thing that the body will sacrifice if the animal is sick, including humans. You know, if you're sick or stressed, what happens? Your hair falls out. Well, surgery is very stressful for cats. Um, so making sure that they are not stressed, making sure they're eating a high quality, complete balanced diet. You could consider giving them a multivitamin that has B vitamins in it. Also, omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil can be helpful for hair regrowth. If your cat is very old and just had surgery, I've seen some cats that are just naked in that area for the rest of their life because their hair growth phases are so long. So hopefully that helps. Here is a question from Blues. Am I saying that right? My cat has CKD, which is chronic kidney disease. Basically what that happens is the kidneys, all the little filters in the kidneys, they start to shut down. And once 70% of the little filters, they're called glomerulus. Um, once those shut down, then you start to manifest the symptoms of kidney disease, weight loss, peeing a lot, drinking a lot, poor appetite, vomiting, all that kind of stuff. So she, this person is asking, um, they are already on sub-Q fluids and blood pre pressure medications for their cat and giving medications for vomiting with, when needed. You're still noticing vomiting once a week. I would say, and then the question is, is it due to progression of kidney disease? This is a great question. So if you were talking to me at a dinner party, I would say, well, what did your cat's last blood work look like? Because what makes cats feel sick with kidney disease is the buildup of toxins in the blood because the kidneys cannot filter the toxins out into the urine. 
And it's the B-U-N, B-U-N, blood, urea, nitrogen. That's what makes them feel sick. So if the B-U-N is high, then yes, that could be making your cat feel nauseous and vomity. If the B-U-N is not very high or it's very low, then the vomiting could be due to something different. And um, my best advice for you would be, I would say, well, if it was my cat, I would check a B-U-N and creatinine on this kitty. And then I would um, see how they're doing um, all otherwise, right? Are they losing weight? Is there soft stool? Um, are they eating? And then as far as vomiting once a week, is that too much? Depends. Depends on how advanced the kidney issue is. If your cat is minimally advanced in kidney disease, vomiting once a week, probably too much. Vomiting once a week is too much anyways. Nobody wants to deal with that. feels terrible. Um, if it's early stage, it's too often, could be something else going on, need to talk to your vet. If it's advanced stage and the cat is vomiting once a week while they're just trying to keep those kidney values under control, that could be status quo. Make sure the BUN and creatinine is checked on your kitty because it could be something totally different. I see cats all the time that not only have chronic kidney disease, but they also have hyperthyroidism, which can cause cats to vomit, or they can have inflammatory bowel disease, which can cause cats to vomit. So it's important to make sure that you get your diagnostics updated on your kitty to try and figure out if that is the cause of the vomiting in your cat. Love this question. Nocturno Astro, Pew. great name. Can you overcome a cat? One of my cat is a domestic medium hair, domestic long hair, and she vocally demands daily combing. I also vocally demand daily combing. <laughs> also, what you guys have to realize is I do tell jokes. I'm the doctor that tells jokes, so lucky you guys. Um, will I cause skin irritation with her daily combing sessions? Well, Nocturno Astro, Pew. if you have not created any kind of irritation yet, you probably won't. Daily brushing for medium and long hair cats, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. If you're noticing redness, hair loss, irritation on the skin, or your cat is running away, and instead of vocally demanding, then it's too much. Dial it back. But right now, you're sounding like an amazing cat owner. So, for you. Okay, here it is. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, this is cute. JC girl, hey friend, when my one-year-old cat wakes up from a deep sleep, she cries and cries until she can find me. Well, you guys have a really strong bond and that's not necessarily a bad thing. That could just be your cat, especially if you have an Asian bre uh, breed of cat, like a Siamese or something like that. Those kids talk a lot. They talk a lot, a lot. I'm so when I go silent and I look like this, I'm actually reading your comments and uh, figuring out what I'm going to read next. Here is a question from a person with a beautiful long name that starts an S and ends an A, and I'm not even going to try and say it because I think it will probably butcher it. Hello, doctor. My cat is allergic to humidity and weather. Whenever humidity rises, he starts coughing and ends up with breathing difficulties. Is there a cure or home remedy? Great question. Um, off the top of my head, if we were just having a chat at a dinner party, I'd say, wow, that's interesting. That sounds like that might be feline asthma or bronchitis, uh, which is uh, feline asthma is more common than bronchitis, but it's an allergic reaction like you're talking about. And I'm not sure what's going on in your environment to cause that, but is there a at-home cure or remedy? Well, if you are able to, if you have air conditioning in your house and are able to close up the house and keep all of the humidity and everything outside, that's probably the best way to do it. Otherwise, if it is asthma, it is important. Oh, huh, thanks. Mallory is backstage. She says hi to everybody. Um, and she says she misses you guys. And um, she's left me in your care. So I hope I take care of all of you. 
So feline asthma, let's go back to this question. Feline asthma is the same, basically the same idea as it is in humans. What happens is they, uh, their immune system recognizes something as um, danger, danger, and it fires, it overfires, and it causes all of their airways to become constricted. They can cause wheezing, it can cause coughing. So is there an at-home remedy other than using um, HEPA filters in your furnace and air conditioner, keeping them inside when it's humid um, so that they're not exposed or whatever that is. If they are having this coughing, if you can take them to your local veterinarian and get an x-ray done at that time. The tricky thing about feline asthma is that when they're not having an attack, their chest looks totally normal. So that can be really frustrating for veterinarians and for owners because owner knows cats has a problem makes an appointment, can't get in for two weeks. When they go in, suddenly cat's not having a problem, spend $300 on x-rays, x-rays look normal, right? So it's really important to get the cat in and have them seen when they're having a problem. The other thing you can do is you can, if you can't take a video on your phone, this is wonderful for veterinarians because we can see what's actually happening. Take a video of your cat. And then when you do talk to your vet, show them the video and the vi the vet, the vet will go, oh, okay. And then also uh, look at your local weather report to see if there's something in particular that's in bloom. Uh, maybe when there's high humidity, maybe there's some special kind of grass or something that's blooming. But those are kind of the things you can do. As far as medicine, I wouldn't do any kind of medicine without the supervision of a veterinarian. Cats, if this was a dog, this would be a different conversation, but cats are different. And we really shouldn't be giving them anything without knowing exactly what's causing it. Ooh, here's a poop question. Yeah. <laughs> what causes poop? What cause? David, what caused poop? <laughs> Being soft and having blood and mucus. Ugh. My two-year-old has done ultrasound and FICO. And FICO. What's FICO? Is it fecal score? FICO. Did you get a credit score done on your cat? Um, if you can get back to me what that FICO is, FICO, feline, I'm looking it up at the same time. I'm not sure what that is. So David, if you can, I'll scroll down, see if I can find it. Has done ultrasound and came back normal. Oh, that's gonna be so frustrating. So uh, what are other things that can cause this? Well, Parasites, internal parasites are the most common cause. So hookworms, roundworms, tapeworms, uh, uh, whipworms, worms, right? Uh, other intestinal parasites, giardia, bacterial, fungal overgrowth, even viral. Um, cats, uh, depending on their ages, can get diarrhea due to viral causes as well. Uh, so um, infectious is a big cause. It's either infectious or it's dietary related where they're having a reaction to something in their food or they got food poisoning or it could be something else entirely. Some other inflammatory condition, inflammatory bowel disease, um, GI lymphoma, uh, which is advanced. It's what happens when inflammatory bowel disease um, becomes malignant and turns into cancer. It's terrible. We don't like it at all. Um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Maybe you have an imbalance in gut flora. Uh, there can also be sensitivities to, again, as I said, ingredients. Usually it's proteins, chicken, beef, soy, eggs, dairy. Those are the most common allergens in cats. Could be just a diet change. Could be stress. Seen stress as well actually cause diarrhea, especially with cats that are boarding. Um, they tend to get stress-related diarrhea really easy. Easy fix for that, guys. If your cat does get stress-related diarrhea before the stressful event, like four or five days beforehand, start giving them a probiotic, especially the ones out there by Purina. Uh, and I'm not sponsored at all. They don't pay me any money, but I like their Fortiflora. And then give it while they're being boarded and then give it for four to five days afterwards as well. That can often ward off a lot of that stress-related diarrhea. David, back to your question. Not sure. Fico. 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 Catch. Not sure what this is. Equal occult blood test. It's gotta be that. 
unless it's something else. Well, that's good. I'm glad that there was no blood in the stool. So um, where, where do you go now? Well, if we were having a chat at a dinner party and this, this was your cat and uh, you were like, what would you do if this was your cat? Well, I would make sure to have a fecal test done, a fecal float test. Uh, that's where you bring in a poop sample and they'll run it usually in hospital and they will look for parasites. They'll look for blood. They'll look for abnormal cells, overgrowth of bacteria, fungus, all that stuff. I would also do a fecal culture as well, which is when they send the poop sample in and see what kind of bugs they can grow out of it. And then lastly, I might put the cat on a trial of a uh, hypoallergenic, easily digestible, um, low fat food uh, with um, some probiotics as well is what I would do. And then I might, depending on how I'm feeling, if everything comes back negative, I might try a couple days of some metronidazole, which is an antibiotic and see if the cat feels a little bit better on that. Might try a different uh, antibiotic as well and see if I can't rebalance that gut bacteria. And then I would recheck with you in a week and see how it's going. If you really want a diagnosis on it and everything's coming back negative, the next step is a big one. It is a uh, exploratory surgery, abdominal exploratory surgery. So they'll go in, they'll take samples of everything. They'll send it to the lab. They'll do the pathology on it. They will tell you exactly what's going on in the gut. So that would be a step after that. Ultrasound is great. But again, guys, ultrasound gives you a picture into what the pet's body is doing at that moment. So they go in there, they have their probe, they put it on the body parts, they scan around, they measure things, they look at things, and then they give us a report. So per se, your cat's doing okay on that day. All they can do is they can look for abnormal masses. They can see differences in the thickness. They can see whether there's a lot of fluid in there, solid material, but it's not the end all be all. So hopefully that helps. We'll see. Still wondering about that FICO though. Ooh, <laughs> this is a great question. Norma, hello my friend. My cats will not drink out of a water bottle. They just want to drink from a, a, from a sink. Is there a way to get them to drink from a bowl? You can try a couple of things, but some cats just really have preferences. You can try offering them a drinking fountain instead of a water bowl. Some cats really just prefer moving water, which is why they like the sink. Um, you can even get drinking fountains that have like a little stream in them that they can drink from. Other things you could try, you could try flavoring some of the water in the bowl with a little bit of low sodium chicken broth or tuna or a little bit of canned food. Um, something that just makes it taste better. You can try um, putting some feel away around where the bowl is and see if that will attract them. But the short answer is you can't make a cat do what they don't want to do. Like literally ever. Who knows that to be true? <laughs> Give me a hell yeah in the uh, comment section if you know that to be true. Somebody's going to be like, no, I have trained my cat. I know what they do. Okay. Okay. Here is a question, this wonderful question. Christine Barnaby, my friend, thank you so much for submitting this question. My cat only likes to eat fresh tuna. Should I be supplementing, supplementing with anything else? Definitely. <laughs> so cat, uh, a meal of just feeding a cat fresh tuna is considered an imbalanced diet with incomplete amino acids for the cat. If the tuna is cooked, it's better if it's raw. Um, that will set your cat up for a taurine deficiency, which is an essential amino acid necessary for promoting life and health. So you're going to run into the problem with trying to supplement with anything else. Well, yes, you should, but don't let your cat starve. They always need to be eating something. So even if they're not eating the right thing, you can offer them still the tuna with other things. So I would just start offering other things next to the tuna mixed with the tuna. What you could do is you could try using just some regular um, canned cat food, hopefully a tuna flavor, and then maybe take some of the tuna juice from the can, pour it in there, mix it around, even microwave it for like five seconds to increase the aroma. 
But yes, they do need to be eating other things other than fish. And especially raw fish will cause a significant nutritional imbalance in your cat. So I'm really glad you asked that question. And I hope that this is helpful. As far as um, talk, getting your cat to try different things, Google it. There are a ton of good resources out there on ways to try it. Or you can try some of the strategies that I suggested. Here is another question from Lisa Reed Trice. Hi, thank you for submitting a question. My cat has a swollen ear that looks like air had been pumped into it. I think she was stung by a bee, but it's still swollen. It has been a few days. I'm so sorry for your kitty. So this can be a couple of different things. And if you have an idea of what you think this might be, pop it into the comment section um, and see if you're right. So without obviously seeing your cat, I can give you three ideas of what it could be. It could be an insect sting, could be, yes. So they do get swelling just like we do. They tend, if they have a uh, insect bite, you'll tend to see uh, like a, a small circular area with an indentation in the middle and it, it feels very firm because all the tissue is swollen and those tend to go away in about 24 hours. Other possibilities of what it could be, Two things come to mind. Cat abscess. One of my favorite things about being in veterinary practice was when cat abscesses come in. Basically what happens is cats, they like to fight, especially male and neutered cats. And what will happen is they will bite or scratch another cat during fighting. That puncture wound becomes infected and then you get a pus pocket. So it could be that. Uh, the cats that are really into fighting and they're the aggressors, they usually have wounds on their face. The ones that are kind of scared and running away usually have wounds on their butt. This is kind of a squishy, fluidy feeling thing. It's usually hot and red and the cat, if it's small, they may be doing okay. If it's big or they're sensitive, they could be feeling really sick. Third possibility of what it could be, a oral, aural hematoma a ear hematoma, which is basically a uh, collection of blood that has collected under the surface of the skin that is causing it to be swollen. And usually this happens because the cat has an ear infection and they've shook their head so hard for so long that they burst a blood vessel inside this part of the ear and the blood has nowhere to go. So it just goes like that. So those are the uh, three things it could be if you're still noticing problems and especially if your cat's acting sick in any way. Get thee to the veterinarian. Get thee to the vet. Okay. Let's look and see what else we have out here. I'm gonna move you over here so that the, the letters and the words are a little bit bigger because I have Gen X eyes and I'm like, oh, what does that say? What does that say? So let's go here. Um, let's go back, back to messages. Here is a question from Guy Fox. Hello, my friend. What can I give my 16 year old male cat to gain more weight. He eats between six and eight, seven, eight ounces of canned food, has a hard time maintaining weight. If he eats less, he loses. Okay, great question. So, also I'm trying to reload the chat. Give me a second here. Let's see if I can get it to reload. Well, um, what you can do, um, so if you're, it sounds like your cat's I'd like to know how many calories are in that seven to eight ounces of food. So you should be able to look on your can of canned food and it should tell you how many calories are in that. Most cats in order to maintain their weight, except if they're very big or very little, generally consume anywhere from 270 to 330 kilocalories per day, K cow. If your cat is eating between 270 and 330 K cows per day of a complete and balanced certified by AFCO canned cat food and still losing weight, then there's something else going on, right? You shouldn't need to feed them a higher calorie meal because again, their bodies are only this big. So they only need to eat about 270 to 330, depending on their metabolism. Older cat, closer to 270, could be just 250. 
So if you're feeding them that much and there's still kind of a bag of bones, then you need to have them checked because uh, in that age cat, you're thinking about things that could cause them to lose weight, diabetes, hyperthyroidism, chronic kidney disease, cancer. And I don't want to scare you and I don't want to make you feel sad or scared. It's just, if you're, if the cat's eating that many calories per day and not able to put the food on, uh, put the groceries back on themselves, then there's something else, either stealing the calories from them because all of those diseases steal calories. The other possibility is there's also absorption issues with their guts as they get older where they can't absorb food as well. But again, if they're eating that much food and still losing weight, probably something else going on. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Okay. How often? Okay. Here's a question about grooming. From Neon Blush, hello my, my friend. How often should I help my cat with grooming and those vacuum grooming tools actually helpful? Great question. So how often should you help your cat with grooming? Depends on your cat. If you have a nice, healthy, adult, short-haired cat, you may never have to help them with grooming because they can take care of it on themselves. If you have a long, medium or long-haired cat, or if you have a cat who has any kind of difficulty grooming, uh, then you may need to help them on a regular basis. So um, what does that look like? Anytime they look like they have mats, anytime they look like they have dandruff, anytime that they have material that's building up in their fur. And I'm particularly thinking about those dingleberries that are around the hind end of the cat. Back here. Not there. Back here. It can help be helpful if your cat is getting matting or dingleberries back there to have a hygienic groom done where they just shave all that back there. Your veterinarian can do that. Your groomer can do that. Are the vacuum grooming tools actually helpful? I have not used them. I, if anybody in the chat has used them and is uh, showed them to, um, and had success with them or not had success with them, then uh, let us know. Okay. Because I don't know. Klingons. Yes. Klingons. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Peg Peggy. <laughs> you guys are saying the funniest things in the back. Okay. we got three more minutes. Um, let's see. Please see some. Oh, well, hello, my friend. Please say something about gabapentin. Thank you. Something about gabapentin. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm not going to tell any more jokes right now. So something about gabapentin. Gabapentin is a muscle relaxant uh, that is often used in cats who have chronic pain, acute pain, or they just need to calm down. Gabapentin is a wonderful aid in case your cat has any kind of difficulties going to the veterinarian. If it's if they're nervous, um, it's wonderful. Uh, or if they're grooming or when they're boarding, it's extremely safe. Uh, there's a low incidence of um, risks with it. And I love it. I, I love gabapentin. And it's funny, here's a funny story. I have a friend who's a, she's a, uh, a world renowned pain practitioner uh, for dogs and for cats. She lectures all over the place. And I'm not gonna say her name, but she loves gabapentin so much. She was like, oh, it should be in the water. We should all have it, <laughs> which I thought was funny. But those are my quick thoughts on gabapentin. If your cat's in pain or has situational anxiety with specific situations, gabapentin can really be your friend. Um, so talk to your vet about it. Okay. And I'm going to do one more. Oh, awesome. Cats.com. Thank you for putting uh, some resources into the check. Oh, guy, I'm seeing what you're saying. So um, Guy was the one who was asking about their older cat not being able to keep uh, weight on even with eating. So it sounds like you've been down this road before. Uh, again, just take your cat into the vet and have things checked out um, and see if you can get to the bottom of why they're not able to keep the weight on. Okay. All right. Do, 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 do. One more. One more question, even though it's 3.30, okay? 
Mm -hmm. Do kittens in heat sleep a lot? My kitten just turned six months age. No, no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. They do not. They are out to trying to find action, especially female cats. Now, pregnant cats do sleep more than normal cats and cats, kittens that are six months of age can get pregnant. So have your cat spayed or neutered as soon as possible so that you don't end up in the surprise pregnancy category. Nobody got time for that, right? Okay. Hi friends. Okay. I can't help it. I'm going to add, I'm going to answer one more. I'm going to answer one more. Oh, and Hey, thanks chum. I see that you're answering um, the questions about gabapentin. Um, thank you for doing that. Gabapentin works wonderful for, um, veterinary visits. Also trazodone is another one that's out there that we use a fair amount. Chronic pancreatitis. Ah, uh, what would be the best diet for her? So Melanie, the best diet for cats with chronic pancreatitis is a high protein, low fat diet. So there are a lot of diets out there. What I would do is I would look at a, a therapeutic diet like for example, Hills Pet Nutrition. And I know, okay, it's big kibble, right? We all get that, but we're just gonna use it here for a second. And also I write for Hills. How funny is that, right? They, they know me. Okay, so I'm looking at their diets that they have. And this is just, you can, you can talk to your veterinarian about a therapeutic diet, but for cats, you're gonna want um, moderately high quality protein hopefully a single source, um, a complex carbohydrate, and then low fat. And in the Hills diets, one of the ones that you could look at either to get through your local veterinarian or look for something that's comparable is ID, digestive care, digestive care, and hopefully the low fat version if they have one. If they don't, still the Hills ID is a good um, safe diet that should not cause your cat to go into a pancreatic flare. And again, we're just hanging out at a dinner party and having fun, right? I'm not actually giving you advice. I'm just telling you what I would do. Okay, guys, I'm over time. It is 3.32. I will be here again next on Friday. So I know there's a lot of questions out there. Um, I... I truly appreciate all of you hopping on here and engaging and helping each other and asking these wonderful questions. So I hope to see you on Friday and we'll go from there. Have a great day.